be ignored. Marine pollution is a growing problem in today's world, which comes from land sources and its wells are blown into the ocean. This pollution result is damage to the environment, the health of all organisms. This objective of this event is to understand the challenges to end ocean plastic pollution, to identify the most applicable way to end ocean plastic pollution, pollution in action, and to provide a mutual learning space where policymakers can interact with their peers and other relevant stakeholders to exchange experience and propose solutions to identify problems in ocean plastic pollution. This event is conducted online through Zoom and YouTube of TSIS Indonesia. To all the participants who join through Zoom and YouTube, if you have any question, you can write down your question in the chat box and the moderator will select the question to be answered by the speakers. Without further ado, it's an honor for me to invite His Excellency Dr. Inyoman Radiata, SPI MSc, as Chairman of Marine and Human Resources Agency, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries Republic of Indonesia to deliver opening remarks. Thank you, moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. A very good morning to all of us. Distinguished speaker, Professor Widi Praktikto, Dr. Lawrence Roman, Dr. Safri Burhanuddin, Dr. Marian's audience, Ayako Mizono, and all the participants, ladies and gentlemen. Rise be to our gratitude. Let us pray to the presence of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. God Almighty for all his mercy and guidance. Is there any problem with audio? Can you hear my voice? Uh, a while. Yes, mister. Yes. Okay. It is an honor for me to, today to open and deliver a speech for the global dialogue on ocean plastic pollution with the topic ending ocean plastic pollution from commitment into action. I would like to extend my deepest appreciation to the committee from Center for Southeast Asian Studies, Indonesia, who have hosted this event, which aim to refresh understanding on the challenge to the end ocean plastic pollution, identify the most applicable way to ending ocean plastic pollution in action, and provide a mutual learning space where policymakers can interact with their peers and other relevant stakeholders to exchange experience proposed solution to identify problem in ocean plastic pollution. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, in Indonesia, based on data from national system on waste management that collect from 207 regency and city in 2021, we found that the total waste is about 25.6 million tons per year. From the system, we know that the highest composition, about 29.5%, is came from food waste. And the second highest, 15.4%, is from plastic. We know that as much as 80% of marine debris came from inland activity that leaks through river and pollute the sea. Surely, marine debris and the impact of pollution to the sea had become a local, national, and global scale issue. Marine debris has 
devastating impact to the marine environment and biota. We found stranded whale in Wakatobi with the gestion tract full of marine debris as it is mistaken for the food. The activity of fishermen is hampered because of entangled marine debris in the propeller of the artisanal vessel. Therefore, we need some action to handle marine debris, especially to reduce plastic, plastic pollution in the ocean. Indonesia has strong commitment to reduce the amount of plastic entering the ocean to 70% by 2025 and could be close to zero by 2040 through National Action Plan on Marine Debris 2017 to 2025. Through Presidential Decree Number 83, Year 2018, Indonesia established National Coordination Theme of Marine Debris Handling, where Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries take role in Working Group Number 3 on Marine and Coastal Debris Handling. In Working Group itself, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries as duty on waste management in coastal and ocean, as the management of plastic waste that came from sea transportation activities, marine tourism, marine and fisheries activities, also outer and small islands. Besides establishing regulations, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries acts strategically in the some most applicable way to ending ocean plastic pollution. The activities, including awareness raising, uh, raising movements, inland waste management from marine and fisheries sector, management of waste coming from coastal and ocean, institutional strengthening, supervision, and law enforcement, and waste management innovation. We conduct many activities nationally Besides campaigns and education, we are succeeded to encourage 109 fishermen to replace environmentally friendly fishing gear, can provide 26 waste treatment facility at fishing port and fisheries villages, conduct six research on marine plastic debris and having five port certified with ISO 15,000 and 40,001. Through 37 Gratan Bersih Pantai and Laut, or we call a Bulan Cinta Laut, 14 school coastal in Indonesia and five Jambore Pesisir, we build a campaign in education as shown in this slide, the distribution of the location for that campaign. Another action we call Clean Coastal Villages Program. The goal is to develop a clean, independent coastal village in waste management through improving community capacity building and awareness. Also, assistance in providing waste management facilities. With the participants of community, students, local governments, and other stakeholders, as we call Gerakan Bersih Pantai and Laut, we realize clean and sustainable beats with communities who care about a clean and sustainable environment. Also to emerge a sense of belonging and concern for the younger generations, the community and local governments to preserve the marine environment in Indonesia. The program is conducted in nine locations in 2022 such as Yogyakarta, Bima, Ternate, Morotai, and other places. However, raising young generation awareness is the key principle for combating plastic pollution in the future. The agency has the opportunity through education system, intra and extra school, in 13 marine and fisheries polytechnic, nine a middle school of fisheries, one community academic with the student from all over the Indonesia. This map indicating the distribution of our vocational 
education that belong to Agency for Marine Research and Human Resource Development Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries. Awareness by young generations, including a training program on waste handling, collecting data and waste management, and training on plastic recycling to raise awareness of young generation with cooperation with the NGO, local governments, communities, and other stakeholders. I sincerely hope that our webinar today can make a real contribution in answering all the challenges of ocean plastic pollution. Through this webinar, we could share knowledge on the initiative of ending ocean plastic pollution. Thank you very much for your kind attention and I hope the webinar will be great success. Thank you. Wabilahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om Santi 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 Om. Thank you very much, Excellency Dr. Inyoman Radiata, SPI MSc, for the opening remarks. Without further ado, I would like to invite our moderator, Ms. Kirana Agustina from World Resource Institute, WRI, to lead the discussion. For Ms. Kirana Agustina, time is yours. Thank you to MC and uh, morning ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully it is a sunny day wherever you are. And a very warm welcome to all of you to our global dialogue on ocean plastic pollution, ending ocean plastic pollution from commitment into action. And as we begin our dialogue today, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kirana Agustina and I'm currently working as the engagement specialist for the National Plastic Action Partnership. Um, and then I'm very pleased and honored to be here with all of you today on this very important uh, topic. And just to remind everyone briefly about the meeting uh, in the event, uh, if you have questions, please uh, put all your questions in the chat box. And we are also live on YouTube, so you can also put your question in the YouTube. And please rename yourself with a name institution so that we can know you better and make it more relatable to everyone. So today we will learn from the expert speaker uh, how to understand about the challenge to ending the plastic pollution, how we can identify the most applicable way uh, in ending uh, ocean plastic pollution in action. And also hopefully in today's dialogue, we can also provide a mutual learning space where policymakers can also interact with, uh, with all of us with among stakeholders here today. So without further ado, uh, I will invite our first speaker, Dr. Marian Olsen, uh, the research director from Norwegian Institute for Water and Research. And to Dr. Marian Olsen, the screen is yours. And you have 10 minutes to deliver your presentation. Thank you very much. I'm uh, happy to be here. Um, it's a pleasure to uh, be part of this important uh, global dialogue on ocean plastic pollution. <clears throat> I'm sorry that my uh, voice is a bit uh, weak, but I will try to do my best. I will also ask you to um, share my presentation in the presenter mode. As I see it now, it is uh, still in um, a working mode. Thank you. Then I can see it in the presenter mode. Yes, uh, so the topic of today is from commitment uh, to action. And uh, please uh, move to the next slide. As I'm representing one of several knowledge providers, I find it relevant to try to make a link between knowledge and knowledge-based policies and actions. Our whole world have been eager to help and support uh, and try to make a difference, jumping maybe to the most tang tangible and visible action, uh, beach uh, cleanups. Though this has a great local value and is ext extremely important in raising awareness, it is of course not the solution alone. Likewise, regulations and ban on plastic bags and single-use plastics um, and uh, the production of new alternative materials are pieces in the puzzle. It's important activities, though it's not alone the solution. Within the new plastic convention now up for negotiation, 
there is a hope that we will get a common framework within the next couple of years. A knowledge-based framework <clears throat> and the knowledge that we as knowledge producers can provide will be crucial in the negotiations and in the uh, development of, of the new plastic convention. Please, the next slide. Thank you. So circle economy has uh, been pointed to as an important element of the solution. I would say it is a principle of great importance and a vision that we should strive to achieve. Though within short and mid, uh, medium long term uh, perspectives, a full circularity is, is not realistic to achieve. Um, also, we can't depend on uh, our solutions on recycling and to recycle ourselves out of the problem without taking any notice on the consumption rates and the demand for particularly packaging material that we have seen up to now. The figures that you see in the slide are from Europe. They are a few years back now. Um, but as you see, when it comes to packaging, at uh, almost um, or a bit more than 40% of the plastic packaging in, in Europe was recycled. This was in 2019. And almost the same share was um, used for energy, energy recovery. And then another 19% was um, deposited at landfills globally. The estimates are 75 million tons to landfill and 75 million tons mismanaged. So we are still away from moving from uh, the linear to, to the full circle economy where plastics are kept in the economy and out of the environment. Please move to the next slide. And um, talking about our demands and consumption rates, we also have to keep in mind that the average per capita generation of municipal solid waste per day is very different um, um, around the globe. And we know that Western and more developed countries um, have much higher levels of consumption than less developed countries. With United States, North America peaking this graph, we, um, and uh, also, as you see, uh, as the text says, China produced 15% of global municipal solid waste in 2018. <coughs> but when you take, into popula take population into account, the United States was the one creating the most waste. So these perspectives also has to be in, um, taken into consideration. And let's move to the next slide. So how to deal with the, the large global challenge that we have. I believe, and a lot of us do believe, that it is only through regional cooperation and collaboration um, that we can tackle plastic pollution. And also by taking into account uh, and integrating both socioeconomic drivers and environmental impacts, technical solutions and management measurements. Please uh, touch buttons. And this is how we can move towards measures. Can you please touch, uh, touch a button so that I can get the animations in place? Thank you. And uh, to have this uh, holistic uh, perspective, that is uh, exactly what the ASEANO project is aiming at. Uh, we have a catchment approach, I will come back to that, uh, where we uh, aim at uh, moving upstream and closer to the sources. And uh, within the project, we are developing monitoring methods for river and litter, and we build local capacity on monitoring. We assess the socioeconomic impacts of plastic pollution and reduction measures, and we identify reduction measures for specific key industry sectors. And we do capacity building through education, um, educating stakeholders, and we disseminate experiences, running training courses, and so on. Next, please. The catchment approach uh, is, of course, as has already been mentioned, 
uh, that the sources to a very large degree is upstream along the rivers that uh, works as uh, conveyor belts towards the ocean. <clears throat> so in the project, we focus on the needs of local stakeholders and we build on the competence of local partners. We consider interactions between the ecological and the social dimensions within a defined area. And uh, this link gives us uh, insight also in, uh, in order to define um, measures, as we believe that um, by having a monitoring regime in place, we can actually see the effects of the changes that we do uh, within, um, within uh, the settlements and cities. Next slide, please. So the project has two main components, the environmental monitoring component, where we build local capacity on monitoring in pilot catchments. So far, we have been working in Indonesia, Vietnam, and the Philippines, and we are also now moving into Cambodia. And of course, we do um, uh, make sure that the knowledge and practice and experience is shared among the ASEAN countries. So we build the local capacity uh, we um, build uh, and develop uh, protocols, guidelines, training programs for doing analysis. As a part of the project, we also collect baseline data. And this is, uh, this is uh, missing uh, to a very large degree. And I would also like to mention that in uh, relation to the uh, plastic convention, it is extremely important for countries to have, uh, um, have own data to bring to the table for the negotiations. <clears throat> we also establish methods for quantification of fluxes of plastics to the ocean. Next slide, please. The social science component. Thank you. The social science component. Uh, um, this is uh, where we build the collaboration capacity to assess the socioeconomic drivers, impacts and reduction measures. Among our project partners, and we also engage industrial sectors, business associations, and enterprises. We identify plastic consumption and waste disposal habits in households. And we establish the role of culture and context in how people perceive and practice plastics. Next slide, please. We also assess existing governance and management structures for plastic waste. We examine best available techniques and, and practices and uh, opportunities and challenges to reduce, reuse and recycle plastic for different sectors. We provide recommendations to plastic waste management measures and policy options. And we examine the plastic policy implications for vulnerable livelihoods, such as informal sectors involved in the plastic value chain. Next slide, please. In the next slide, I'm showing you a few, thank you, I'm showing you a few results uh, from our questionnaires and studies on, uh, on socioeconomic aspects from Vietnam, Indonesia, and Philippines. We don't have to go into the details, but it's just examples of the type of questions and answers that we have got. Uh, from Indonesia, as you can see, uh, we have, for example, asked, do you know if there are others who dispose their waste in the river or drainage sewer? And by asking whether there are others that do this in, and not asking whether people themselves do this, we believe that we get um, actually a more honest uh, answer. And um, <clears throat> let's move to the next slide without going deeply into this. Putting together the uh, information that we get from the environmental monitoring, as well as the information from the socioeconomic studies, um, we have produced a model where we can model pollution dynamics in the river and river island systems and the releases to the ocean. And with this model, we can ideally also um, sort of uh, um, uh, tweak and twist uh, buttons to see what kind of measures and uh, initiatives and actions that can give certain outcomes on uh, the flux and transport to the ocean. Next slide, please. And finally, 
lot to spend too, too much time here. Uh, a few of the highlights from the Asano project so far. There are baseline reports that have been produced for Indonesia, Philippines, and Vietnam. Monitoring programs are running in uh, all three countries. And um, there has been a strong engagement of local governments, enterprises, and stakeholders in all project activities. We have produced a best practice handbook on plastic packaging. And there has been great engagement of ASEAN students with competitions and supervision. There has also been uh, several training courses and education material that has been developed pertaining to monitoring microplastic analysis and social science approaches to address plastic pollution. And there are several reports in progress. And I would also like to mention that we are in the process of extending the project, uh, moving into several countries. The final slide, please. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, sorry if my voice was not uh, fully comfortable to listen to, but uh, I'm happy that I managed to, to come through. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Marian Olshan, for sharing the very informative presentation and sharing with us as well the extensive product knowledge that you've been provide, uh, produced as well. And from Dr. Marian Olshan, we learned uh, that it is uh, important, uh, circular economy is an important approach in tackling plastic pollution. And there's uh, the important and imperial uh, uh, needs as well for regional cooperation and collaboration and how we can build the competence of the local stakeholder to do the, mon data, the monitoring because data is, is very important and, uh, and each country needs to bring data to the table as well in, in, in order to be effectively tackling the issue of plastic pollution. So thank you again, Dr. Marian Olsen uh, for your presentation and moving on to our next speaker. Uh, we will have Professor Widi Agus Pratikto, uh, the professor at Institute Technology Surabaya and also senior research fellow at the Center for Southeast Asian uh, Studies. Uh, Prof. Widi is one of the most respected ocean experts in Indonesia, and I believe so. We are very happy to have you, Prof. Widi, and you have 10 minutes uh, to share and to deliver your presentation, and the screen is yours, Pak Widi. Over to you, Pak. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Kirana, uh, terima kasih Pak Arisman, uh, you got the, the invitation. I suppose to use the the one that provided by by you, Kirana, at our uh, office. Yeah. Okay. So we, I would like to talk in combined. Uh, sometime I I will be utilizing Bahasa since. Uh, easily to grab the intention of the meaning, but uh, in general, uh, most of the material uh, being uh, delivered in English. Next, next slide, please. So, uh, yeah, next, next, next. That's fine. Yeah, next. And this is just uh, the thing that. Okay, uh, I think in the matters of. Uh, marine debris or plastic debris, and then we have to remember Indonesia is not a small country. Indonesia is a very, very big country. So I think in, pers in respect of operational, I will more discuss the way, uh, as, uh, as mentioned by DG Pangda uh, on last Monday, that every province should encourage the utilizing the resources as well as the uh, catastrophe. Catastrophe can be uh, debris, can be earthquake, can be some other thing. So uh, actually when we rely on the uh, land, then we should include undang-undang number 26. But this is just the case when we are relevant to marine debris. That's how we'll be talking uh, act number 27, as well as act number one, 2014, act number 23. This is the thing that most of the case I will be discussing the way how we operational in province as well as district, because this is the thing that now it seemed to me uh, we are in stall situation, you know. Uh, permit is coordinating by 
a province, sekda or dinas, dinas or sekda. But then when we have a problem, that will be going to kabupaten kota. So this is the thing that uh, will be more important how to deal with this kind of aspect. As well as we deal with Act 32, which is about uh, marine and ocean. I was, I was having what you call it, experience uh, having in uh, uh, Gresik, Propolingo, and Banyuwangi. So in Gresik, we were having a student dealing with uh, marine ecotourism, but related as well with debris, as well as pengembangan pelabuhan Teluk Lamong. We were having evaluation under the Lindu tree, but the impact was to uh, Pemda Gresik. You know, the permit was from uh, province of Jawa Timur, as well as the Probolinggo. And recently, we were dealing with the marine ecotourism aspect as well as related area in Banyuwangi. So those three will be reflecting the way how we suggest uh, dealing with the debris or plastic debris or whatever. Next. Next, please. Okay. So this is, is just how we what you call it, express that Indonesia is very big country. Uh, next. Uh, as well as, so when we compare to United States, we are about that size, even though we are having waters rather than land. But we got 34 uh, province and state having 50. Uh, this is when we compare with Europe, then we are starting from Britain up to Iran, you know. So don't even think that Indonesia is very big. So when you are in the post, operational minister or DG, then you have to work very, very, very hard, you know, no laughing at all, I suppose, you know. Next. Uh, this is the practice of uh, we are we are Im imposing the integrated coastal ocean management. You know this is just part of the introduction. Next, so this is the area. It seems to be good whenever we are looking the part which is good, but if we if we take a look in the eastern part, then we will be having more problem and more not like this kind of thing, you know. So this is the thing that we have to think to bring those kind of thing all together. Then I suppose that every province through sector or kepala dinas integrating kabupaten kota to work together because under Undang-Undang 23, now is compulsory from the for the uh, province integrate the kabupaten kota, you know. So this is the focus area that I will be dealing with. Next. Oh, this is the zone. Okay. Next. So this is the special delineation. delineation. So what this definition or this kind of thing. I, I would like to have everybody participating in this discussion, knowing the situation, you know, because what happened was, uh, I was I was part of somebody or person that dealing suggesting to uh, minister of ATR agri uh, uh, ATR and BPN Badan Pertanahan Nasional you know when we were having about wakatopi and HAT hak atas tanah you know so we have to combine undang-undang 26 and undang-undang 27 what happened was last two weeks he was issuing the letters, which is actually not covering those kind of thing, Undang Undang 27. So, actually, this is the thing that we may have, uh, what you call it, communication, a better communication to solve those kind of thing rather than uh, what I call with reshuffle or changing the minister. Because the minister is expert in law. So, to, to me, I believe that he is uh, capable rather than the uh, the recent one. He got the background in education uh, regarding 
uh, uh, land reform and those kind of thing. But this is my perspective, my own perspective. Next. So this is the legal framework. Next, Kiran. Uh, this is the legal framework as well. So we are putting the detail. If you would like to have this course, then just let me know, you know, uh, uh, because this is the important assumption or knowledge if you would like to decide. Otherwise, then you get flung rather than just like the decision uh, that was letters on June 6, you know, that was accident. To me, it's, it was accident. Next. So this is the area and your jurisdiction, uh, the territory or something like that. Uh, the, the way how the act will be performing. Next. This is the way from integrated coastal uh, management without O, then integrated coastal ocean management, because then we include Undang Undang 32. Next. So this one is supposed to be having kind of training or capacity building in regard of pollution control. After understand the legal framework, then we may operate in terms of the pollution control, but we utilize integrated coastal ocean management. We, we take a look uh, later. Next. So this is similar one, a relevant act. Then we act 26, 27, act one, act 23. This is the thing that we have to consider how to integrate province as well as Kabupaten Kota. Next. This is the one that I mentioned. Dirjen Pangda in the meeting uh, for uh, focus group discussion, he was mentioning that uh, that was uh, last Monday, uh, 13 June, we encourage how to utilize the uh, what you can, resources as well as whenever we have the uh, catastrophe or, or bencana, whatever. Next. So this is what we call it, penguatan pemerintah daerah. So I expect that uh, the high level here, Pak Nyoman and Pak Arisman, you may work together how to make this training or this kind of uh, attitude that uh, we may work together or dealing together, not only in uh, the pre, but also whenever we would like to utilize the resources. So utilize Undang Undang 23. So we would like to have those kind of thing integrated into activities under the Kabupaten Kota, you know, not only the province. Next. Okay, this is the principle of ICOM. The principle of ICOM, sustainability, uh, consistency, integrate, integration, uh, kepastian hukum, partnership, peran masyarakat. So all those matter, we have to put together. You know, otherwise then, uh, the previous matter of culture, attitude. So we cannot deal with regulation put in the jail. No, we have to deal with Community. I, I would like to mention later on the way how to integrate community part of the engagement. Next. So our dream was, our dream will be this is situation that we have natural resources. We have social processes. We have economic target or processes, but we have to take a look, climate change. So this is the situation that we have to hold in the future, not only in the future. Last 20 years up to next future, we have to hold this kind of thing. Next. So this one is integration, you know. Uh, uh, usually, usually, just like in Wakatobi accident, I call it accident, you know. Integration is easy to, to mention, but it's not easy. So, keterpaduan antar pemerintah dan kemenangan. Pemda, pusat, kabupaten, kota. We have to integrate that. So we have to be, whenever you are DG or minister, you have to be humble and talk to kabupaten. When you are dinas, then you have to be humble to talk with university. 
you know and people neglecting university because i don't know what happened i was teaching some time ago but i'm from university so i know the way how to communicate and to integrate those kind of engagement so pusat daerah as well antar ilmu as well you know next so when we look upon the uh, how we utilize the pesisir and kelautan marine and coast marine and terrestrial then we have activities here urban development navigation uh, fisheries aquaculture and then we have the control how economic pressure will be how political pressure will be then we set up management measure so this is the key that we have to educate the province to have this kind of idea and spell out to communicate with uh, kabupaten kota to ngo to industry something like that because we were practicing some time ago and it was success in five province you know uh, when i was teaching but now now i think i believe that i will help in east java to to establish this kind of thing being reflected you know because uh, this is the thing that actually the principle that we have to be not we but especially the paladinas sector to be humble and grab to the kabupaten kota you know this is the basic nature that we supposed to have that next uh, this is the guideline from common coma so i think we were we were in city i utilizing this as a guideline from common coma okay but the thing is i wish pak safri is there common coma is not only giving guideline but also monitoring you know this is the thing that we have to have that guideline is there but we have to have monitoring next slide so sa peningkatan kesadaran so this is the thing that i will deal with community community participation whether rt rw kelurahan whatever you know we have to touch that pengendalian sampah plastik this is the way that we we used to have that you know we separate the uh, garbage or the debris into several matters liquid plastic and others uh, but now is getting less and less and forget it remember that when i was in city i when i was visiting philippines some three years ago the uh, the store not giving us plastic remember but indonesia just recently still using plastic but now we have to buy that you know so this is the thing that i think in indonesia many smart people the problem is 275 million people you know the the number of people is not small Philippines is on might be only 99 million but still you know one third of indonesia indonesia is big but it's not part of the apologizing we have to work hard how to cover those kind of thing implemented into small uh, scale uh, family housing on those kind of thing a mechanism of pendanaan so pendanaan i think we have to uh, don't even think that pendanaan mean loan you know I don't even think like this kind of thing. Participation of uh, uh, industry, NGO, uh, keluarga. I think participation will be better rather than uh, 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 most of the case is easy to get loan. Then kelembagaan, you know, kelembagaan mean we establish like whether in RT RW, might be in kelurahan, uh, kind of. But I will give you example in in marine uh, in marine and uh, coast and marine we were dealing with program mitra bahari you know i will i will show you later next so this is coordination regulation that we need more and more understanding before we operate the implementation next so this is the one that i mentioned uh, in the coastal area in the coast and uh, marine area and then we can utilize mitra bahari as well as happy himpunan ahli 
pesisir ya rencana pesisir this is already in under undang-undang 27 so under undang uh, act number 27 this two organization is that the thing is that we have to i mean everybody termasuk pak nyoman you know you have to know this kind of axis we just utilize that next uh, this is the regional implementation structure this is starting 2002 no when i was dg we were starting this kind of thing penetrate into university engage with in jawa timur we engage with pt pal semen kresi and some other industry with ngo now we develop like uh, uh, sea soldier you know we develop sea soldier so young youngsters by by supporting Uh, senior like me then engage like beach clean up activities training something like that in Jawa Timur. Jawa Timur is one of the 15 pivot of uh, sea soldier. You know? Kirana might be knowing a bit who is the leader. I forgot, but the beautiful ladies, you know, the the the, the chair. You know? So actually, we deal with local government, uh, central government. Uh, private sector, NGO, and university. So all together working in education, extension, policy, applied research. So actually the vehicle is there under Undang-Undang 27 in the Act of 27, you know. Okay, next. So we support the partnership. What is the, the purpose? Utilization, common use reduce conflict, reduce redundancy. So we have the control, those kind of thing, to make more effective and efficient. Next. This one is in Bahasa, I'm sorry. That in provincial, Sekda, Dinas Kelautan Provinsi, Universitas, Industry, NGO, and Community. So they are all together, should be planned and being trained or get line to have those engagement. Next. Oh, this is the relationship between governance and community. This is under the, actually this is the uh, statement by UN or UNDP, you know, uh, how we measure the community, whether effective or not. For example, participation, transparency, accountability, those kind of things. So we have the way how to control whether community perform or not perform. Next. Related to vulnerability in Indonesia, I think I think we have to deal with this kind of thing, you know, because uh, Indonesia is part of the ring of fire, earthquake, landslide, uh, erosion, mostly is part of those kind of things. So I think we have to aware, and the fact that for seven years or so. Human Development Index in Indonesia is getting slower and slower, you know, all over and lower. So I think we have to to uh, bring up together. It's not matter who fall, but let's us working together. You know. Next. So this is the diagram how community function leading col collaboratively. So we have to make like stimulation or maybe incentive or whatever to have collaboratively. What is the purpose? Reducing poverty, you know, and deepening the community engagement. So this is the principle that we are dealing with community. Even though I'm engineers, but I'm learned, you know, the way the social network will be. Otherwise, then we cannot do that. Next. Next, please. Uh, Prof. Vidi, you have five minutes left, Pak. Oh, okay, the problem is the speed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I try to move fast. Next slide, please. Is there a problem with the computer? Because I have 61 slides. So...
Yeah, it's on again, Pak Widi. No, I didn't see that. Uh, please, after yeah. the okay, next one, yeah. next one. Okay, next. So this is the thing that actually I will not go deeply, not go deeply this kind of thing because we utilize uh, Miss Marianne or some other. But uh, I have the material. This is the case when we were having before Timor Leste was part of Indonesia. And I was part of engagement with Monash University, how to build the oil petroleum between Australia, Indonesia, and Timor Leste. But then 99 left over. But then Australian BAP having trouble regarding the oil speed. My Professor Muftasar was dealing with this kind of thing because he was suing the uh, Australian BAP to to get the money, you know, because it was pollution, big pollution. Next. Oh, this is, uh, sorry, sorry. This is in Alaska. Uh, okay, this is in Alaska, but it was uh, Exxon Valdez, you know. I was in United States at that time. Okay, next. The one, uh, this one is Montara Spill, you know, that was in, in Timor-Leste, but similar one. So I think I think we have to be uh, prepared those kind of situation, contingency plan and uh, hotline discussion because we, we don't want this kind of thing become the confrontation between Indonesia and Malaysia. I was traveling many times in Australia when I was in ITS, you know, before ITG. So we were actually we are very close with Australia. How to make brotherhood? How to make uh, economic development in between us. Next. So this is the impact of the uh, marine ecosystem. Okay, next. Next. Uh, actually, I, was, I would like to mention that Indonesia is number two, in the second row after the Chinese. So we have to be careful. We have to manage 34 provinces because under Undang-Undang 23, and then we have to deal with those kind of thing. That's why I more deal how to deal with province and Kabupaten Kota rather than the uh, plastic, oil, or some other thing. Uh, but we are in the laboratory of environment. I would, I would like, oh, we will be glad to work together with you if we would like to have something in common for the coming uh, years or so. Next. This is number two. Next. 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 So the impact is not only on food security, but also in tourism. You know, we are we are having problem with this kind of thing. Uh, like Teluk Jakarta, when we have uh, microplastic being ate by the fish, uh, as well as in Surabaya. Surabaya and Jakarta is the most complicated territory, you know, in terms of sea waters. Next. Okay, next. Next. So this is just kind of stimulus, you know. We cannot do every single activity uh, with, uh, for example, uh, pitch clean up or something like that. We are outlining this kind of thing. For example, economic loss, uh, vessel damage, and Actually, Indonesia very much being blamed by Australia because they think that the plastic is from Indonesia, you know, but actually from Thailand, from Malaysia, from Vietnam, or some other thing because they are flowing, uh, following the gravitational and going to Darwin. Okay, when I was in the government, so we are we are trying to explain, but then we are in the good uh, communication and good uh, relationship. Next. So this is just kind of example that once might be we need a piece clean up. Afterward, we have to keep that as it is, you know, because this is the problem. Piece clean up might be project, but after that, we have to put in order as a program. Next. This is in Surabaya, you know. So that was in Jakarta before, and this is in Surabaya. Next. 
um, this is the case that we are interviewed. That was I mentioned in uh, Gresik, Probolinggo, and Banyuwangi. Next, because we are having this is similar one. Uh, actually, we utilize Happy and Mitra Pari, and I will be glad if uh, might be some of you or need a detail or something. There is a book re, uh, regarding program Mitra Pari issued by USID. You know, it was some time ago. Uh, Mitra uh, program Mitra Pari One and Mitra Pari Two. Two is how to develop planning, budgeting, and some other thing. Next. So this is the one similar one like that. I try to emphasize the important one. Next. Uh, okay. Check, checking the outcome. Next. So this is the thing that we have to persuade the community uh, through community. Awareness, understanding, acceptance, behavior change. So when we deal with community, we have to have this kind of principle. This principle can be carried out bila kita sabar. Yeah? If you don't have sabar, just instruction, and then next two weeks we check, oh, no, no way. That's why we need NGO. We need university. Because to carry on this, we need, what to call it, sabar, you know? Uh, next. Okay, then make aware about the risk. Under, understand the impact, accept the consequence, behavior change, education training through education training and outreach. See, even in the United States, regarding the storm and thunderstorm, we still need outreach and extension specialists, you know, uh, pendamping or penyulu or whatever. But really penyulu, you know, uh, bukan penyulu yang yang sampingan ya yang yang uh, semaunya enggak tapi professional uh, extension specialist next so this is the thing that we have to have behavioral thing reducing the land the <coughs> base leakage reducing the seabed leakage and law enforcement so this is the principle next Jadi uh, ini tindakan ya. Jadi yang saya sebutkan, uh, saya dealing dengan uh, debris. Saya tidak menyebutkan plastik, uh, liquid, or whatever. It, it is easier if we are having all 34, at least 15, being trained, educated, and they have handling this kind of thing. Then later on, the next step will be dividing. This is liquid, this is plastic or some other thing. So this is the thing that we have to utilize. Uh, so I would like to have like the PRL or KP3K being involved. Menko Maritim yeah, should be involved. So this is the thing that we need in the, in the conclusion. Next. Suggestion. And has the role of government, business, local government, NGO, university, and community. Lesson learned from other countries, for example, from Japan, from United States, from Europe, and some other thing. Coordination national province, this is, should be monitored. You know? Otherwise, then we just have a wishes and pray and pray without monitoring. So, Ibu Kiran, <coughs> Ms. Kiran, I think that be all. So, hopefully that, that will be helped. Thank Especially you so much. Yeah, especially about plastic and some other thing, I may having some other time for uh, emphasizing this kind of thing. But to make the 34 province engage, I think uh, JSAAS should have this kind of thing first, rather than we are dealing with especially plastic. As well as Ibu Gira, now you are in the position that doing those, you know, you might have part, pass in empowerment. The other one is uh, specific, uh, this kind of thing. Thank you very much and have a good time.
Thank you so much, Prof. Widi, for your very comprehensive and excellent presentation. Uh, from Prof. Widi, we learned that Indonesia is very big country and it's very important to have a coordination, yeah, power coordination from national and more specifically empowering province and district cities. And again, debris is about attitude, so behavior change, and it is highly important to integrate those uh, sector, those multi-stakeholders from uh, different uh, cities, district governance, and communities as well. So thank you again, Prof. D. Before we moving on to the next speaker, just to remind everyone uh, that uh, you can ask uh, our experts uh, through chat box. So feel free to uh, to put your questions either in the chat box or to in the YouTube uh, as well. So moving on to our next speaker, we will have another expert, Dr. Lauren Roman from the CSIRO or Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization from Australia. So Dr. Lauren will, will deliver her, her presentation in the next 10 minutes. And over to you, Dr. Lauren. This Thank you very short. much. I'll just share my screen. So just confirming everybody can see the screen correctly? Yes, very well. Thank you, Dr. Lauren. Thank you very much. All right. Um, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Dr. Lauren Roman, and I'm pleased to have the opportunity to talk with you today about plastic pollution and the work of uh, CSIRO, which is Australia's Commonwealth Science Agency in the region. Um, I'm giving this talk on behalf of Dr. Britta Denise Hardesty, um, who leads our program. Um, she is on leave at the moment, but I can present to you uh, in her stead. So we want to talk about large scale monitoring, so particularly developing robust and flexible approaches to support policy responses. Um, next slide, thank you. So before I start, um, I would just like to start today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands and the seas where I live and work here in Hobart in Tasmania. So I recognise their continued custodianship over this country and acknowledge the um, elders past, present and emerging. So next slide. So our team at CSIRO has been focused on marine debris or plastic pollution for about 15 years now. Um, the approach that we take is to look at the sources and the drivers of waste in the environment. So this means trying to understand not only where and how does plastic get into the environment, but considering how many people live in the area, how the land is used and what infrastructure is there. Next slide. We also look at the, oh, hang on a second. Uh, next slide, thanks. Um, thank you. We also look at the dynamics and the distribution of plastic in the environment, which means asking if the plastics move through the environment through human behavior, for example, such as littering, or whether our waste is moving along rivers and creeks and streams, or whether it's being driven by winds or by moving along transportation corridors, such as roadways and highways. Uh, next slide. We also look, oops, sorry. Um, the third area of our work has really been to ask questions about the impacts of plastic pollution on wildlife as well as on people and communities. We take a risk-based approach to understanding what are the impacts of ingestion of plastic, entanglement in plastic and fishing debris, as well as contamination by plastic associated chemicals on major marine taxa such as seabirds, sea turtles, and also marine mammals. Next slide. And finally, we have a, a work, uh, sorry, a 
body of work that tries to understand what the policies or practices are important and which link to plastic pr uh, reduction in the environment. So given limited resources, how do we get the best bang for our buck? Or how do we get the most impact from money spent on plastic reduction policies? Uh, what is the most effective? Is it legislation? Is it incentives such as giving people money for returning plastic containers or other plastic items? Or do we get the best money out of outreach and education? These are all important components to consider because our management or policy responses in turn affect the amounts and the types of plastic waste that end up in the environment. Next slide. So I just want to give a definition of monitoring for plastic pollution. So marine, plas uh, marine litter monitoring as adapted from the UNEP's evaluation manual defines monitoring as the regular collection and analysis on the distribution of information of, for the surveillance of plastic and other anthropogenic litter in the marine, coastal and aquatic systems. So monitoring plastic in the environment is an important aspect of the work of CSIRO's programs. Monitoring efforts are what provides this really basic information to understand what is happening in the environment and meet the needs of the different countries that we work with. Marine litter monitoring can provide quality scientific information to support policy decisions. Next slide. One of the major programs that CSIRO supports is uh, the Global Plastics Leakage Project. So through this, we take, uh, we work closely with community groups. So, so far around the world, we've worked with about 8,000 to 10,000 people around the world to help build capacity in multiple countries so that people and communities can take a consistent approach to understanding plastic losses in the environment. And also to focus on place-based, socially, culturally appropriate solutions that work in different contexts. As we know, not all of the countries and even communities within cult countries are the same. So it's very important to work with people locally for a solution that works best with them. Next slide, thanks. Uh, next slide, thank you. So the objectives of the Global Plastics Leakage Project that CSIRO is leading is to validate the estimates of plastic pollution. So many of you will be familiar with some of the studies that have come out that uh, makes lists such as, you know, this is country is number one for plastic, this country is number two for plastic, number three for plastic in the environment. These um, studies, while they're valuable, um, they provide modelling estimates and ground truthing some of these estimations is quite important, especially given how different plastic is, even in different regions with the same country. So that's validating these estimates is one of the major um, important objectives of this project. Identifying hotspots for loss is another objective of this project, as well as investigating what are the drivers behind plastic ending up in the environment. We would aim to make a global baseline of plastic in the environment and also measure successes and changes through time, um, depending on things uh, such as policy changes uh, in the local area. Next slide, thank you. The studies that we've done uh, also focus on what drives plastic loads on land. So population is important, but there's many other factors that drive um, plastic losses to the environment. For example, urbanisation, the distance to public transport, such as nearest roads um, or railway stations, the regional and local populations, and also the density of people and infrastructure. Uh, the land and use of the land also dependent uh, determines what sort of plastic is there. So is this a marine environment? Is it housing? Is it agriculture? Are there marine reserves? Also the socioeconomics of the area. More poverty is in, associated with increased plastic loss to the environment. More education and higher employment is associated with lower plastic losses to the environment. Also economic resources, the higher the economic resources, typically the lower the plastic that is lost to the environment. We also find a global constant in the relationships between plastic and humans. Generally, we tend to find more dumping at urban boundaries and in lower socioeconomic areas within each country. And we find the same relationship in all the countries that we are looking at. Next slide, thank you. 
So some of the questions we address by marine litter monitoring, monitoring include, what is the relationship between litter in the environment and the debris in nearby sites? Are there identifiable sources and pathways through which debris moves and reaches the coast and the marine environment? Also, what investments in facilities, in policies, outreach, reduce waste in the environment? Next slide. Thank you. Oh, next slide, thank you. Oh yeah, sorry. Nope, that's correct. Um, so I just wanna use a recent example um, from Australia just to demonstrate, um, just to demonstrate this concept. Oops, sorry, I think just checking. Yep, that's the right one. Thank you. Um, a recent example from Australia to demonstrate this content. So for example, we did uh, about in 2013, a continental scale plastic pollution survey across all of Australia's coastline, conducting a series of surveys every 100 to 200 kilometers around Australia's very, very long coastline. Um, we then repeated this survey six years later and were able to compare the different strategies that local governments around Australia's coastlines um, were taking to determine which of these were um, working at reducing coastline litter and which ones were not working very well. So the, our research showed that local strategies um, at the local council level can result in large scale benefits. For example, we observed an average reduction in coastal litter of 29% over the six years at the continental scale. So this is this varied um, by local council. Some of them had made huge reductions um, in coastal litter through their strategies, um, while others, the strategies they took were not very effective. Um, the strategies that encourage stewardship of coastal areas and economically motivated appropriate waste disposals. So for example, cash for container schemes were correlated with the reductions in plastic pollution. Next slide, thank you. So we've partnered with various countries around the world for this global plastics leakage project. So um, we've just got a list of them here. We're also uh, have some upcoming, uh, next click one more time, thanks. Um, upcoming monitoring partners as well, especially in the Southeast Asia region. So I'll talk about them slightly more now. Next slide, thanks. So we have uh, in this project, there's a variety of um, structures of the Global Plastics Project. We do start with capacity building for fields uh, and analysis training. We then start sampling to estimate the load of solid waste on land uh, the volume lost at the ocean, and also what are the leakage points. We use this information to develop models for predicting sources and also the pollution plume, taking into key factors uh, in our sampling methodology, such as the population density at each site, transport and infrastructure, poverty and education levels, as well as land use. And these, uh, this leakage project can be used as a springboard for policy evaluation, developing a global baseline, as well as different countries' national monitoring programs. Next slide, thanks. Um, you can click through, there's a various of photos here to show that we use a variety of methods and our methodologies include everything that you can see here, including both microplastics and macroplastics. Um, so we know that there's quite a vast menu of different survey options and the Global Plastics Project focuses on different compartments. Next slide, thanks. We have two current projects um, in the Southeast Asia area. The first one is a collaboration with UNEP's uh, COBC program, looking at reducing marine litter by addressing the management of plastic in the value chain in Southeast Asia. So we're working closely with Thailand, Cambodia, Philippines, Vietnam and Malaysia on this one. And then the second project we're working with is with ACN and Australia's DFAT looking at um, uh, oops, got the same one posted there. Um, but we've got a second project uh, with ACN as well. Next slide, thank you. Uh, we also are just completing a project in Indonesia at the moment, looking at plastic pollution monitoring in Bangdang in Java. Um, so this is in collaboration with the Monash Sustainable Development Institute 
UNPAD and CSIRO with funding from the Oak Foundation as well as CSIRO. So this is just a figure from the report that we're compiling at the moment, looking at the density of plastic in different regions um, throughout the area. We've also previously cooperated for surveys in Bali in Indonesia, and we're in the process of potentially organising a follow-up survey at the moment. Next slide, thank you. One of the really exciting parts about the um, Global Plastics Leakage Program is that it's been adopted and adapted as part of national and regional monitoring programs and national action plans in several countries, including the Republic of Korea and Vietnam. Next slide, thank you. So the challenge of this pro of marine debris will require working at national and international scales for implementing a set of large multidisciplinary projects with diverse partners. So CSIRO is a leader in marine debris research um, from both from manufacturing to understanding how marine debris ends up in our oceans and the plastic that it has. So it's up to all of us to choose our future with respect to plastic pollution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Lauren Roman, uh, from, for sharing your exciting projects in uh, large-scale monitoring. Uh, so from Dr. Roman, we, uh, we learned that it is important to do the monitoring, but also ground routing and validations as well. And um, local strategy can also provide local solutions that have a big impact here, uh, Dr. Lauren. So thank you so much for sharing those uh, your research and projects. And moving on, we're going to have another expert, uh, Dr. Safri Burhanuddin, senior lecturer at Hasun Hasanuddin University. Uh, Dr. Safri is also a, a long champion in tackling this plastic pollution in Indonesia. So it's a pleasure and honor to have you, Dr. Safri Burhanuddin, and the screen is yours, Pak. Thank you, Kirana. Good, uh, very good, very good afternoon. Uh, after good morning, <laughs> uh, honorable speaker, my colleague, uh, can start from the first page, please. Uh, thank you, Pa Arisman, for the invitation from the CCS. And then I would like to give some presentation about the. Uh, we are talking the global what's called ocean plastic pollution. Of course, the ending of ocean plastic pollution. And now, just to let you know, just to introduce, I'm Safri Burabudin. I'm now a senior lecturer at the university. I was a deputy in coordinator minister of maritime affairs and uh, what's called uh, an investment. So this is my what I joined. I was involved in this project since 2015 until 2021. So that some of the, the data is most of the data is it's belong to the coordinator minister of maritime affairs and, and uh, investment. Next, please. Let, let 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 me uh, uh, explain about what's 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 going on and the, the simple uh, to know about the problem of marine plastic litter. As you know, from uh, the total waste generated every year, it's based on the data of Minister of Environment is 65.8 million ton. Among that, there is there is 6.8 million ton is the plastic waste generation, and so we need to make the baseline the. Uh, five, we make a baseline from three uh, institutions and then we put the, uh, from the LIPI, the, our plastic waste leakages is from 0 0.27 to 0 0.59 million ton per year leakages to the, to the sea. Now, this, is, this is important now. The, nation, the government has national target. Our national target, we want to reduce 70% by 2025. Why we want to reduce? Because as Indonesia nominated as the number second of the what you call the marine plastic the this country to produce it up to, uh, based on the uh, based on the the, the publication uh, the twenty fifteen it it is but the, the publication mentioned that we produce Indonesia produce about almost one million ton but finally after we check and check again we, we just produce about zero point twenty seven to zero point twenty nine and even though it is still a big number, it's still a big number. So why we, 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 we the government and the, the, what's called it, the community and the local government also to, to make a commitment how to reduce uh, the, this marine plastic debris at least 70% by 2025. Based on what's uh, Pasafri, you're muted, Pak. Yeah. Udah. Udah, Pak. Ya, Pak. Oh, okay. Dari tadi ya? Enggak, baru aja kok, okay, Pak. Sorry. Baru aja. Just... Can, can we continue the, the next slide, please? So, 
ladies and gentlemen, my colleague and other, look at this slide. If you see uh, from the 6.8 million ton from the plastic, at about 61% is no collection. The rest is okay, it's taking about 439 is already well collected, but no, no collection 61%. Among the 61%, is just 41% open burning is still the problem. And from the one, we can see the end of the just it's about 620,000 ton is still what's called illicacy in the ocean or not burning. Or based on the data of the leaf, is about 400 to 2,500,000 ton. This is what we have to manage, this one. And if we continue, next please. You see the, the data, the baseline from the marine debris from uh, LIPI data, we can see here, the baseline, you see, NPAP, N, NPAP, NPAP show also the data, and, and World Bank also show the data, and LIPI also data. So the data is, NPAP data is almost is from, from the land, and how, how many, how many uh, waste go to in, uh, leak it to the, to the river. World Bank also uh, accounted about this one, and the LIPI counted about how many uh, plastic waste into the, the to the sea, so they so we 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 agree that at the time that based on the DP data we agree about two hundred seventy and fifty five hundred ninety thousand ton is leakage to the sea. This is that we want to count is because we are target to the reduce seventy percent. So we have to know we can success or not, or we still on the track or not. This is, this is important in this dialogue. Next, please. If you see the, the system collection data, you see 39% plastic waste collected, mostly is in the formal. And you see about so still in 10% into uh, dumping into the water, just to give you the, the what's you call it, the, the, the other uh, phase of the slide, the, the diagram of the un, unmanaged of the waste. Next, please. So based on this, uh, this event, and the, the government make the national commitment of marine debris based on presidential regulation, number uh, 83, uh, what the uh, pa, pa, we already mentioned before. We have five strategy to reduce the, the what's called uh, to combat the marine debris. Strategy one is the national movement to increase stakeholder awareness. This is important. How to change the mindset of the people since the early, early years uh, until the adult. The second strategy is how to land-based waste management. The best example is we handle all the about Chitarum Reaper, how we handle Chitarum Reaper. The third uh, strategy is waste management coastal marine array. This is under coordination of Minister Marine Affairs and Fisheries. How many activities, what the Papa Widi also mentioned, is so, so many activities also Papa Nyoman also mentioned, so many activities to, to handle about waste management coastal marine array. And the strategy four is funding mechanisms to strength and monitoring and low is more in the how to quickly, uh, to make it is like, like what's happened is now is plastic berbayar or to pay plastic. It's one, one of the solution. And, the, and other, other institutions to strengthen and also the, the quality of the, the plastic and how to make the mechanism to collect the, the, all the, 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 the plastic waste in, in, the, in the easy way. And the, five, the strategy fight the research and development, of course, most in, in involved not just in government, but it's also in private sector, how they make it easy, their product, their plastic, it become easy to, to also to recollect. As you know, Indonesia is the one country is also the consumption plastic not higher among the Asian country. If Singapore is the number one, it's about more, almost 200 and 300 kilo, kilogram per capita. And Indonesia just about nine kilogram per capita is so far. But anyway, it's still we have so many plastic uh, waste in, in, in our area. Next, please. Look, look at this, this slide. What is our target? Our target is clear. We want to reduce 70% 70, 70 of marine plastic by 2025. How we can reduce? How we reduce is from first is the 30% reduction of the source. What is the source is the crisis waste generation, of course, this year. This slide is explaining the ambitious target yeah, of our solid waste management, including it here, 30% reduction and 70% proper handling by 2025. The target is also applied to plastic waste. There are some indicators to measure the achievement of the target, including indicators for waste reduction target, including decreasing waste generation per capita, reducing waste at source through community-based re R, and reducing waste by the producer, as well as indicator for waste handling target, including increasing waste to be treated through recycling, composting, biogas, thermal recovery, and RDP. So if we can manage our solid waste 
100% reduce in source and living properly, we do believe we can reduce marine plastic uh, 20 percent, 70 percent in the 2025. Next, please. And what what the reality now? The, so we can see the reality now. The table is so solid. Scenario achievement what we achieved from 20 to 2019, 2025. Based on the data, based on the scenario, we have achieved uh, the, the progress in 2021 is 25.90. But in reality, we have more. The plastic acid spray is 28.96 decrease. Since it's mean, the results show is 3% 3, 3 higher than the expectation. It means what is the program of the, the President decree in now the marine debris uh, what's called it, uh, reduction is still on the track. We order now is three percent higher than expectation from this this data. So marine debris calculation formula is simple. How many how many land based waste leakage into the sea? What how many the from sea based waste from marine act activities? And that is the uh, equal that marine debris. Next please. Next please. So based on this one, we can see also so many regulation now, and the regulation is to improve. It means regulation to uh, support the, the the marine debris reduction. From we have we have at least from the regulation we have five uh what's called it uh five uh, method. First we can see since the floodplain strong regulation is enforcement. We can see here as well as clear standard provision and criteria national and local level. In this case, we are now finalizing two regulations that are regulated marine plastic, included presidential decree on national plan on action combating marine litter and minister regulation on the reducing plastic shopping bag. So you can see here, we have from how to improve solid waste management, how about the responsibility for community, what kind, and also responsible production. And we also make a stronger, stronger relation uh, cooperation with international. And also it based on the, uh, the to strong also the law regulation. This national policy and strategy, to, we hope that they can support to accelerate the ma, 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 so, uh, ma, marine plastic reduction. Next, please. And if you see reduction circulating plastic waste, we can see also here how to improve this one. And from improving plastic waste management, we can see also plastic law, public engagement, law enforcement. We also reduction at source, yeah. And redesign innovation and also practice production use of plastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, my, my colleague, uh, I want to say to you uh, that what the government uh, do right now are doing right now is still on the track. So, we need what's called it to continue monitoring to to continue remind that everyone must be uh, involved in this in these issues. Because why? Because it is not just the, the what's called it, the, the issue or, or for the government, but it is also the issue of the, the society, and the issue of the local government. So why the, the, the regulation is there? So we just to uh, implement this regulation. Next, please. So in I would like to say that because now we order so many co collaboration international. I say marine plastic debris is a global, not just Indonesia. You see, Indonesia is one part of the in Asian country to involve in this uh, the problem of the um, marine debris. So we need together, we need to work together. Thank you support society also to do this one and other country, not just in Asian uh, regional, even it's Norway is also in, involved. Our national action plan is presently have been showing great progress. So we can see from the marine debris reduction, almost uh, reached 29% or higher, 3% higher than our national, national target. And national regulation as well as the strategies for the plastic waste reduction have been well implemented. So now that the we are from the, the the university now and then you also now to to continue to monitor and to to support the government and local government. Let us waiting because now some government also make it do the 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 the, the project like like I know uh, is Java uh, DKI. We are waiting. What about the, the result? The success story? Because after we are working for more than almost the five years, we can get the success without the support the local government is it's, it's not it's impossible. So why the, the role of local government is very, very important, supported by the, com the local community. So the government needs to strengthen the collaboration of the private sector, of course, also, and partner nation and other stakeholders that can benefit for all collaboration. I would like to thank you, and I think we can, we, we, we can continue dialogue in this issue. Thank you so much. Good, very good afternoon.
Thank you so much, Dr. Safri, uh, for your very informative presentation and sharing us uh, the knowledge. And again, as pa Safri has been mentioned, marine debris, plastic uh, pollution is everyone's issue. So we need to work together. And thank you so much, Pak Safri. And last but not least, uh, we have our next expert speaker. Uh, Ayako Mizuno, Program Manager uh, from Economic Research Institute for ASEAN and East Asia or AREA. And Dr. I uh, and Ayako Mizuno will sharing areas regional knowledge center for marine plastic debris and also its activities. So without further ado, the screen is yours, Ayako. Over to you. Thank you very much, Kirana. Nice to see you again. Uh, please share the presentation material and make it on. Yes, perfect. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my, my voice is a little bit forced myself, um, but I, I hope you can bear with me. Um, thank you very much again for the invitation. I would like to extend our gratitude to CC's colleagues and the Ministry of uh, Maritime Affairs and Fisheries of Indonesia for this invitation uh, to participate in global dialogue to end pl uh, ocean plastic pollution. Um, again, my name is Ayako Mizuno. I am the program manager of Area's Regional Knowledge Center for Marine Plastic Debris. And I would like to take uh, 10 minutes to talk about our activities. Uh, so next slide, please. <clears throat> so allow me to explain <clears throat> who we are as a way to uh, contribute in the, uh, the you know, um, fight against marine plastic debris. So the Regional Knowledge Center for Marine Plastic Debris, or RKCMPD, is a specialized branch created uh, under the Economic Research Institute for ASEAN and East Asia in 2019. So AREA, uh, the Economic Research, Research Institute for ASEAN and East Asia, is an international organization. It's a research institution created in 2007. So almost uh, more than 10 years later, uh, due to the fact that ASEAN plus three region has become, uh, is considered today uh, responsible for about 46% uh, of the marine plastic leakages annually into the ocean. Uh, uh, the, uh, research is, uh, uh, the Regional Knowledge Center for Marine Plastic Debris was created in 2019 to address this issue in the region. So our goals, as you can see on the right-hand side, uh, is to create a regional network and raise awareness regarding marine plastic debris. So that's the first uh, objective. Secondly, we would like to promote innovative actions in each member country. And lastly, we would like to facilitate national and regional cooperation. So these are the three objectives. Next, please. And uh, I would like to explain in this slide who are our collaborative network, who are our partners. First of all, as you can imagine, we work very closely with ASEAN plus three governments, usually the Ministry of Environment or, or its equivalent, uh, its agencies, uh, institutions. Um, next, uh, like academia and research institutes uh, in uh, um, marine plastic debris issue or environment. And thirdly, I would like to elaborate more on this uh, later on, but we work very closely with the private sector uh, in plastic uh, industry. And finally, we work also very closely with international organizations and NGOs. Next, please. Uh, in this slide, I would like to emphasize the fact that uh, areas regional knowledge center um, uh, activities align almost perfectly seamlessly with the uh, ASEAN Regional Action Plan uh, uh, for Combating Marine Plastic uh, Marine Debris, which was published last year uh, in May 2021. So as you can see on the lower side, uh, pillar one and two of our activity is mainly on capacity building. So the pillar one is capacity development of governments. Uh, to formulate policy for, uh, to, to support policy formulation. And pillar two is capacity development on uh, information administration and research, which correspond uh, to component one and two uh, of ASEAN Regional Action Plan, uh, component one being policy support and planning, and two being research innovation and capacity building. As for the pillar three of areas, regional knowledge center, information sharing and international framework um, or initiative, would correspond a little bit to uh, co um, contribute to the component two of the regional action plan. And finally, our pillar four, information sharing to raise awareness and promote efforts taken by private sector and citizens would correspond to component three and four, 
uh, of uh, the regional action plan, which are um, uh, public awareness, education and outreach and private sector engagement. So we strive to become one of the uh, regional platforms along with other uh, partners and institutions, um, some of them even uh, present today, uh, to enable and facilitate the objective set forth by the Regional Action Plan of ASEAN. Uh, next, please. <clears throat> uh, so given the time limit, I would like to present what we have been doing uh, since 2019, our creation, uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, uh, a little bit summarizing in one slide. Uh, this is not easy, but I try to, I try to be very brief. Um, so, first of all, as an information center, uh, information sharing center, we have created a website and it's actually still ongoing, um, uh, undergoing some uh, renovation overhaul to create it a more interactive and user friendly website. But you, there already we exist. So, if you go to RKCMTD, which is Regional Knowledge Center Marine Plastic Debris, uh, hyphen area.org you will find uh, national laws, regulations, strategic, strategic plans of each of the ASEAN plus three members, meaning 13 countries. You can find all the information there and it's updated regularly. Um, you also find good practices sharing uh, on, for instance, waste management, recycling, uh, beach cleanup. Uh, you will also find scientific knowledge on uh, uh, life cycle assessment of plastics and uh, chemical impacts of plastic on marine ecosystem. Um, and uh, in, you also find, uh, this is more on our social media, uh, uh, ASEAN Plus 3 uh, related marine plastic news collection uh, and dissemination. We try to educate uh, our followers uh, through our social media about uh, what's happening in the region and also some of the global discussion. Um, and we also present uh, who we are in various international forum, including this uh, global dialogue. But we have been also invited to ASEAN working groups, uh, for instance, on coastal and marine environment and chemical and waste. Uh, we have been also involved in the G20 report process. We are collaborating with UN agencies, JICA, GIZ. We have many partners. Um, we have, although this is not our main activities, we do also publish uh, marine plastic uh, debris related uh, research results. So um, some of them I would like to cite here is plastic recycling policy and good practices in Asia, regional waste management, intermunicipal uh, cooperation and TPP, applying EPR for plastic waste in Asian developing countries, especially EPR becoming a very topical uh, uh, subject lately in, in the region. Um, and we'd like to expand this uh, a little bit more further uh, in the future. Um, we also have interview series called Zero, Zero In on Plastics, where uh, we interview art, uh, um, marine plastic related researchers and activists uh, with their stories, with their contribution to educate and you know, raise awareness again of, uh, of our readers. And we upload them regularly and you can find them online. So all this information, you can find it on again, rkcmpd-area.org. Uh, um, and lastly, we also organize webinars and events uh, so far, we have been focusing, uh, so what we have so far is like ASEAN region-wide event and also some of the member states uh, focused uh, on online events uh, since we have been um, uh, operating since 2019 and end of, since end of 2019. So 2020 and 2021, as you can imagine, we have been uh, operating under COVID time. So all of our activities have been mainly online, but we have focused on Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam. Um, and in August, we would like to organize another event uh, with the, the Cambodian government. Um, so next slide, please. Now, allow me to focus on two particular uh, uh, work streams that have been a bit of our focus of 2021 and 2022. So 2021, we decided that we give a special attention and, uh, to our private sector um, partners. As I mentioned earlier in the, um, uh, in the earlier slide, we consider the private sector, private companies to be one of the most important stakeholders when it comes to finding solution for marine plastic uh, waste issues, of course. And so we have been organizing events to invite them, invite them to talk about good practices they have been uh, doing 
and not really about uh, the extra uh, work that they do, but how their business itself can contribute to the waste reduction. Um, so we have been organizing events, as you can see in, in the photos. Um, next slide, please. And what we created last year in 2021, and it has been uh, really the focus of our work last year, and of course ongoing this year as well, is to, uh, again, create a partnership with the private sector. And by that, uh, we created an online platform uh, with the uh, aim to uh, highlighting and, and promoting <clears throat> private companies with positive business initiatives to reduce plastic waste in the region. Um, <clears throat> so again, it has to be uh, companies with business activities um, uh, in reduction, in recycling, in waste management, in service sector, uh, which aims to sort of stay away, uh, stay away from the linear way of uh, consumption and production and really moving into more a circular economy. So we try to encourage that uh, trend uh, by uh, highlighting them and promoting them on our website and also uh, creating events and, and inviting them to talk about it. Um, next slide, please. So if you go to our website again, but rkcmpd-area.org, uh, slash story this time or if you go to our website and if you click on 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 uh, private sector platform uh, tab you will find that we have a, a web page dedicated to collecting and disseminating business practices positive business practices to reduce plastic waste and by that of course uh, preventing uh, plastic waste uh, from going into the ocean so far we have 66 entries published um, originating from six, six different countries in ASEAN plus three region. So out of 13, we have six countries represented. Uh, they are Japan, Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, and Singapore. And uh, this is where I would like to also uh, invite uh, anyone who might know someone who has a business in plastic reduction, recycling, uh, upcycling, uh, um, waste management services, uh, designed for recycling uh, to reduce, plas uh, reduce plastic waste to sort of take part in, in our platform. It's completely for free and it's really to highlight and promote uh, positive business activities. Um, so next please. <clears throat> so yes, I would like to finally talk about our new work stream of 2022. So last year we really launched uh, the private sector uh, focused uh, work and we continue uh, this year onward as well. And uh, in August, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we will organize a private sector event with uh, the government of Cambodia. Um, but in 2022, we also started a new work stream, this time focusing on youth engagement. Um, so awareness raising among citizens about the problem of marine plastic debris is one of our uh, mandate. Um, and we try to focus this time on youth, young generation. And the objective I'd like to highlight, especially the first two. Uh, first is to raise awareness among youth in ASEAN plus three of the marine plastic debris problem in the region. And secondly, to deliver accurate and data-driven information to provide a sound basis uh, for young people to lead discussions uh, surrounding marine plastic debris in the region. And what we have done so far, um, we are still uh, you know, halfway into 2022, but we organized the SDG talks on marine plastic debris and the rainy season uh, in collaboration with the UNDP Indonesia country office in January this year. Uh, we also have since last month, a uh, collaboration with ASEAN Japan Center on eco school program um, that is ongoing. So we are working on this. Uh, we also have youth activist interview series, a podcast that is uh, upcoming. So I hope you can tune in and, and listen to it. Um, and we might also uh, uh, create some uh, competition, maybe something related to photo, uh, photo competition uh, uh, in the near future. So these are the activities that are uh, ongoing and quite new in 2022. Um, next, please. So just to end, and I would like to ask my colleagues uh, who are also in this event to share our social media um, links. Please follow us. On, on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, Instagram. Uh, we post our update quite regularly. Uh, we try to make it uh, interesting. 
So you learn that, you know, so that people can learn a lot on marine plastic debris, but, you know, in a friendly manner. And I hope you can visit our website. And, and yes, thank you very much. And back to you, Kirana. Thank you so much, Ms. Ayako. It is very a uh, great presentation and encouraging to hear from you. Lots of regional efforts because as Prof. Widi earlier mentioned that uh, Indonesia is really, really large and maybe and and mostly yeah uh, the, the waste is maybe not only coming from Indonesia alone but from regional countries so it is very encouraging to hear from you uh, Miss Ayako there's a lot of uh, regional efforts uh, through various reports and also dialogues and two important stakeholders to be engaged like private sectors and also youth as the, uh, the, the next generation as well in tackling this issue so thank you so much uh, Miss Ayako uh, now moving on we are going to uh, have a Q&A session and we already have a few questions to the speakers. And I'll start with a questions from, um, let me see, uh, to uh, Dr. Uh, Lauren Roman. Uh, maybe you, you may want to elaborate more. It's a question coming from Jerome Kabansak from University of the Philippines, Visaya. So a uh, question to Dr. Roman. Um, has there been studies around Australia wherein quantification of marine plastic pollution was done? And if you want to share more, how have you identified from which country are these marine litter from? Oh, yeah. So over to you, uh, Dr. Roman, if you want to explain more yep. to us. Thank you very much for that. And thank you very much also for your question, Jerome. So to answer the question, uh, CSIRO has conducted two uh, large surveys around the continent of plastic in the coastal areas and on the beach. Uh, the first one in 2013 and the previous one after that, I think, was 2020. So uh, the plastic, uh, you cannot always tell where plastic comes from, but quite often the larger items on the beaches do have uh, recognisable brands and sometimes they even have barcodes as well. Most of the plastic that is on Australia's beaches does come from Australia. And most of the highest densities of plastic tends to be near the capital cities of Australia. Um, and it is mostly local Australian brands. However, this varies by region. So there are some very, very remote coastlines on Australia with almost no people that live in those regions. Um, and in these areas, you can have plastic, uh, sometimes in very high densities that have come from origins other than Australia. For example, um, on Tasmania's west coast, so that's the island at the far south of Australia, the west coast of Australia, uh, west coast of Tasmania has a very low human population, uh, but one of the highest marine debris densities of the survey. And most of the, the gear, uh, plastic found here is fishing gear. So it's uh, fishing gear probably from the southern uh, Indian Ocean and the fisheries that are occurring there with very, very high plastic loads. Um, so some of that fishing gear, much of it is rope. We don't know which country the rope has come from, um, but likely from fisheries. Another area that has a high amount of marine debris that doesn't have an Australian uh, origin is in the very north of Australia, especially below the Arifura Sea. So there's a large collection of plastic that reaches Australia's coastlines from this area um, that has its origin in Southeast Asia. Um, sometimes you can tell which country from the brands and sometimes not. Saying that I picked up a a bottle from um, Singapore just a couple of months ago um, from a Singaporean brand, brand plastic water bottle. So yeah, and that was on an Australian beach as well. So we can receive uh, plastic from other areas. Most of it, however, across the country is from Australia. Thank you so much, Dr. Lauren. I have its answer, Jeremy. And uh, next question uh, to Dr. Shafri. Shafri, there's a, a technical question from, from the participant uh, uh, asking how significant the green plastic technology to plastic waste. There are a lot of new technology in green plastic, like uh, compostable plastic, also biodegradable plastic. So yeah, uh, what is your opinion on that, Pak Shafri? Over to you. Thank you. Uh, if you talk about plastic is plastic is plastic. Well, we call it the green plastic, but finally, if we cannot prove it that they can what you call it soluble in five or three years or something more years. But reality, plastic is plastic. Uh, just the name biodegradable, but in reality, it's still plastic. So we just to what you call it uh, must be uh, um, uh, to do properly 
to to using the plastic. We are we are we are we are not contra the plastic, but how to do how to do it in proper the plastic. That's it. So for me, it's same. Plastic is plastic. We the the name I, I, what's called a biodegradable or green plastic. But this just the what's called how many years they can resolve but it compared to the the the, the original plastic. Thank you, Mas Afri. Yeah, so plastic is plastic, but how we manage it yeah, properly uh, to not leak it to the environment. So, Mr. Marian, raising hand, do you have any additional point? Over to you, Mr. Ms. Marian. Uh, yeah, I think you're still muted. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Clear and loud, okay. but there's yeah. uh, some echoes, so, uh, Dr. Uh, Marian. But let's try again. Yeah. Yeah, I will try again now. Okay. Thank you. Let's I go. hope it's better now. Mm. Yeah. No, I just wanted to comment on uh, on this question on uh, on alternative material development and. Uh, from the uh, Norwegian Institute of Water Research, we have um, developed some st uh, studies and carried out some studies on uh, agricultural plastics. And we have looked at the difference between, or the practice, the different practice uh, using uh, uh, regular plastics um, for mulching or biodegradable plastics. And when, we, when there is a regular plastic uh, cover on the soil, uh, the farmers they do they take that plastic off again, and uh, it is uh, delivered for uh, recirculation. Uh, when it is uh, uh, when they use biodegradable plastics, they don't do like that. They keep it on the soil and uh, in the soil. We look at the microplastic of the soil in the areas where they have used regular plastics and biodegradable plastics. We find a lot more microplastic particles in the mm. soil using mm. biodegradable plastics. So even though that plastic may be biodegradable under certain conditions, it certainly takes a long time. And probably the conditions out in nature is not uh, ideal. So um, I fully agree with uh, Dr. Tafri, uh, plastic plastics, there's no quick fix. So jumping to solutions by introducing new materials, we really need also knowledge to understand fully uh, what these materials are and how they act in nature. So that was my additional comment to that question. Thank you so much, Ms. Marian. Yeah, it is very important to to have more research yeah, on this kind of material or uh, to replace the single-use plastic because again, even though it's biodegradable, it's, there's still microplastic material that leakages even to the soil that maybe will impact to our food chain as well. So next question, uh, maybe this is question to, to everyone. Uh, so we've been, uh, all the expert has been mentioned many times about data and data. Um, uh, and there's a data coming from uh, institution, university, and, and even local citizen, but uh, is open data possible for marine plastic debris issue? And who or what institution should help in this open data? So I open the floor for anyone, uh, any speakers who want to jump in to answer question. Uh. Uh, yes. Pirana, oh, yes, I yes, might. But... Uh, I think I think that will be good if in Indonesia start with not only uh, debris but and every menko having a coordination for related data because I think we have to start having decision making process through the data. Mm. You know we are. Uh, being attacked because rumor, issue, or something. But when we have data, then we will be having proper uh, answer or elaboration or something. I think uh, Pasafri used to be in marine affairs and Manco Maritime. I think we may uh, uh, start putting a little thing uh, by, uh, especially now everything is based on support from profits you know so integration of the future after the pandemic after economic crisis 
now it seems the mechanism of the government pushing the province more engaged. So I think that will be good if uh, a crisis situation is sometimes making us uh, better. Remember during World, World War, uh, First World, World War, America is getting into industrial country, you know, due to the war. So presumably that Indonesia will be having more because we are having 275 uh, a million. Uh, not only burden, but we may utilize as a capacity that we can utilize. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prof. Widi. And uh, maybe the next uh, speaker would like to answer to this, Pak Safri, maybe, Pak. How to elaborate open data? Is it possible to have open data, Pak? Over to you, Pak. I'm happy to talk uh, yeah, to this yeah, point. Yeah, oh. Yes, sorry. Sorry. Okay. I just just to let you know because the, the government now what's call it they have they have information if we can collect the information we have to improving data and quality management past the question through uh, there is the link from Minister of Environment we call it uh, SEPSN as system pengolahan system nasional aja SEPSN dot Menteri LHK MLHK dot go dot ID so you can put the data to improve the data. All the data we collect there. So we have we call it bank data. Bank data is provided by the Minister of Environment. So everyone can use this one. So we can we can provide this information. We can provide all the information coming in. Then then not all the people get the data, but we have one national data. We can use this one. This they will provide this one. Thank you. Thank you, Vasafri and Laurenia. You you want to add more, please? Yeah, I would just want to talk to this point. I think that um, data from uh, NGO and citizen science efforts are very, very important and can provide a really valuable role in helping uh, institutions understand um, what is happening with plastic pollution. Um, but there is a big difference in or a big variation in quality for different organizations um, on what the quality of the data is and whether they're what for example what different item categories uh, they are collecting and whether this uh, is harmonizable with other sources of data so uh, recently we did a project with um, ocean conservancy's icc uh, international coastal cleanup program and also um Project Aware now called Paddy Aware's um, sea floor cleanups, um, where we attempted to harmonise um, seven or eight years of citizen science data across all of the countries, and we found that it was very, very variable. This um, citizen science um, data, some citizen science groups and many, many citizen science groups all uh, contribute their um, data as well as uh, government groups to these databases. And some had done really good um, cleanups and really good data reporting. So we were able to use um, the data that they collected to um, answer questions about marine litter in the areas, whereas other surveys, um, the data quality was not very good and we weren't able to use it. So there is a huge difference in data quality, um, but it is still um, important. And right now, Australia is doing a a project where the Australian government at the federal level is looking at creating a national repository for citizen science data so that they can provide um, the information that they collect into a large national repository and they still own the data and it's completely voluntary whether or not they want to contribute it but so that government policy makers and scientists such as those from CSIRO but not just from CSIRO can use that information um, to look at, uh, you know, long-term changes and comparisons between areas. But there is a sort of minimum standard of information that you need from this data to be able to compare it. Um, and we've written a report on that. Uh, uh, there's a good report called the Gazamp report, which um, can provide some of this information. So I'll uh, link the Gazamp report. And many of you may be familiar with it already into the chat box. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lauren. Yeah, you, you raised a very important and interesting point on engaging citizen science, yeah, especially in helping validating and ground truthing as well. And uh, so thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lauren. Uh, and we have another question, but uh, there's also a comment from Pak Rudianto to Ayako Mizuno. 
I have experience to the real action to reduce plastic waste transfers become become fuel oil and to encourage local youth organization to work together with West Bank in Tambaan Coast Pasuruan City. Uh, Parudianto, do you want to maybe speak, uh, sharing a few minutes, two minutes, uh, your experience, Pak? Uh, you're still muted, Parudianto. Uh, uh, Parudianto, you're still muted. Ah, okay. Well, I have uh, experience yeah, from the success story, and this is the real action. Yeah, the real action. Yeah. I am Rudianto from Ravijaya University, and I have experience from 200, eh, 2019 until 2021 with the doctor surfing program from Ravijaya University. I encourage uh, local people to use uh, plastic debris in coastal area in Tambaan in Pasuruan city to be uh, kerosene, premium, and diesel. Yeah. And the, and I also encourage the uh, youth organization, the local youth organization, work together with the West, uh, the bank, which bank, yeah, and working very well as long as I'm there to monitor uh, how the system works, yeah, and the machine I use, yeah called a distillation machine and innovation by Pak Muryani. Pak Muryani is a man coming from the Blitar yeah, and now he's a very famous to uh, convert plastic waste to uh, solar and diesel and kerosene. Yeah. If sometime the price of the fuel oil is increasing, so the uh, the people is not worry about the oil price because they can produce for themselves as long as the youth organization and the West Bank can collaborate uh, very well. Unfortunately, yeah, the local government don't care about the innovation. Yeah. I have there for three years. Yeah, the question is about the sustainability, yeah. uh, whether the sustainability can be running well for the future. Yeah. Because the fishermen use the diesel yeah, uh, every day. Yeah. So they work together. Yeah. But uh, everybody, the government don't care. Yeah. The, the, the government has a regulation. And my, and my opinion, uh, what is uh, how the program uh, is also intervened by the government or how to support the, the innovation local, from the, the local? Yes. Thank you, Parudianto. Yeah, thank you so much, Paso Parudianto, also sharing a very good uh, innov innovative solution, yeah, pa, especially from the university and how also to to support local government and utilize this this innovation solution as well. So uh, maybe Miss Ayako, do you have any any thought to share? And please go. Thank you, Kirana. Yes, yeah. thank you. Uh, yes, waste bank uh, that uh, Mr. Rivianto mentioned, uh, you know, very important also business activities in uh, plastic waste reduction. We also have refill station. So it's more of a service for the people to bring their own plastic container and just refill shampoos or detergent at the shop. So um, many ways to reduce plastic debris uh, um, uh, from the business perspective. Now I would like to maybe share um, uh, what, what is the condition for the private companies to participate on our platform? That was, uh, by the way, uh, my colleague uh, uh, shared the link. So please go go ahead and, and, and click on it, um, please. Uh, so um, on our website, on our uh, private sector platform, we have just two conditions. So it's very simple. 
the private company has to be operating in uh, ASEAN plus three region, meaning within the 13 countries region. So the com company itself does not have to originate from those 13 countries. It can be from outside, but have to have some business operation within the region. And second, uh, uh, and you know, the second condition is for the private business main activities, business activities to uh, contribute in plastic waste reduction. So it cannot be in, in the uh, social uh, corporate social responsibility scheme, but more on a business activity, uh, reducing plastic waste. So, so long as a, a private company uh, uh, sort of um, corresponding to these two conditions, uh, please go ahead uh, on our website, uh, fill out the form, just submit it and we will approve it and you will be published on our website. And we try to really encourage, especially the smaller businesses to participate on a platform. Uh, in a sense, not that we uh, focus particularly on smaller businesses, but I feel that, you know, we feel that, you know, smaller businesses have more interest in being on a platform, thinking that this can, you know, encourage the business to flourish, be you known by other uh, stakeholders, other business partners, or even customers in, in, in the end. So, um, yes, so these are the two conditions, and we really have many, many businesses uh, from Waste Bank, Refuel Station, to our bigger companies to uh, be on our platform. So thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Ayako. Uh, yeah, so uh, Pak Rudianto, you may later on can fill in in the in the platform uh, that Miss Ayako also mentioned, and it's also encouraging. Uh, hopefully, by by seeing a lot of innovation in the market, uh, we can have more positive uh, and optimist, and also hopefully can create more collaboration between uh, between the sectors and the people. So next questions, we are have a question coming from. Let me see. Um, yeah, so the second uh, question, the next question is on the issue of coordination. Uh, the coordination has always been a problem, especially in Indonesia, especially we are a big countries. And so uh, how we can strengthening this coordination and make it better. Uh, so uh, is, maybe Pak Safri, you want to take up this question, Pak? Yeah, okay. The coordination is, 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 is clear. It's easy to say, <laughs> it's difficult to, to do. But anyway, uh, we are now a minister of coordination. That, that's clear the role of the minister of coordination. The minister of coordination is the role is coordinate among the institution and, and, and local government. Technically, it's under directly is the minister of environment. That's clear. But in local, it's direct and responsible by the government based on the regulation. So if you want to make some uh, coordination, look, where, where, what is our position now, where we are? If we know our location, our, our position in lo local government, so we coordinate in, in NGO directly to the to the local government. If we in between uh, or among the the, the what you call it, the institution, if if, talk, if we are talking the technical, so we are our coordinated is the minister of environment. If talking the policy strategy, we are talking to the minister, uh, coordinator minister for maritime and 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 uh, what you call and investment. That's clear. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Safri, for, for answering the question. And uh, I see pa Prof. Widi raised the hand. Uh, Prof. Widi, over to you, Pak. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think, I think uh, we have cultural problem in Indonesia. Uh, we have to be frank in terms of engaging coordination. Uh, might be uh, it was... Uh, better before, but lately, I think too much political content or issue uh, brought into the government and mix up with the uh, capacity of information or something like that. Uh, I was I was working in regional office in the D8 uh, in Istanbul. I think at that time, uh, coordination through a ministry for foreign affairs. The second one, I was in CTI, coordination with marine affairs. You know, so I compared the two things, and I was a secretary general in the ministry of marine affairs. Uh, I don't know who will be pushing, controlling the coordination because actually the menteri coordination, menteri coordinator should be engaged coordination. This is the, the point that I would like to raise. Uh, recently, we have a, a 
for example, problem in some other thing, minyak goreng or pollution and some other. If the Menko is focused in the area, and then I think that will be a better we resolve the problem. So my view is those kind of things, especially the last five years uh, when I was in CTI, the coordination was a problem, you know, because Indonesia is putting very much money, 450,000 per year, but we don't get some other thing that equivalent or I would call it uh, uh, the amount is reflecting the amount of four hundred fifty thousand. You know, so this is the thing that we have to always think about the value and the impact. Uh, so hopefully that Pak Safri, even though just retired, I, I was longer retired. You know, not retired. I mean, I'm in university. No, no not but, retired. Just senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think that will be good if Manco is more serious, you know. I don't think that now is very serious in coordinating. So hopefully that the in, engagement now is in a turbulent situation. We call it FUCA, you know, volatility, uncertainty or something. So the dynamic, the dynamic equation should be involved in the decision-making process. So I think that will be good if, uh, what you call it? Uh, not the problem is not only money or support, but also coordination. And hopefully that the mechanism will be better and clearer, especially when we are talking with, uh, for example, area, with CTI, with the D8, with international because Indonesia is reflecting the strongest of the largest country in ASEAN, but hopefully that all of us in the in the session can help the way how to make it better. When we are criticizing, we are not hating the uh, the country, but we love the country, you know. So this is the in, interpret, interpretation that sometimes uh, disregard when we are criticizing mean that we are not. Uh, about like the country. So this is the thing that might be Kirana as well now still engaging in NGO. So you might convey this kind of suggestion through uh, whatever office you will be connecting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Widi, and thank you so much for those answer. Um, and this this next question, but we can see in the chat box there's very uh, interesting uh, on a uh, potential collaboration as well, Ibu Amita from Brin uh, uh, reflect to uh, Pak Rudianto as well for potential support as well. So it's good to see uh, there's a good collaboration in tackling uh, the ocean plastic pollution together. And the next questions uh, will be on, let me see. Um, yeah, uh, so maybe this is a quite general question. So. So uh, any any speakers that want to take up the question as well, how, uh, that Indonesia has a big and bold target, uh, ambitious target in reducing 70% of ocean plastic pollution by 2025, and also 30% uh, waste reduction and 70% waste uh, in proper handling waste. Uh, what are the main challenge that uh, all the expert speakers see and the opportunities as well in order Indonesia to achieve this target. So uh, any speaker would like to take up this question first? Maybe Pak pa Safri, pa. <laughs> you, may, you may expert on this, like uh, you may want to share your wisdom as well in, in how uh, the challenge. Uh, uh, Kirana, our, our target simple because you yeah, want pa. to make marine, marine, marine debris reduction 70%. So. Yeah. All the issues we, we work together, it's not easy. 70% is not a small number. It's a big number if you compare the original number. number. But if we do together, not just, not, just, but not just from the government, local government, institution, university, and other countries, I think we can do it. The most important, we started from the upstream, of course, from upstream before we go to the downstream, the, the sea. If we can control the, the upstream, I think we can do it. So I'm very thank you for all the people here, all the experts. We know so many, so many things we can do. And I, I, I hope that we, we can 
strengthen our, our collaboration. What Pak pa, Widi say, we, we need the coordinator, we need the coordinator is more stronger. Yes, of course. Without the stronger coordinator, I, I don't think so. It's just like a business as usual. So I'm, I'm hope this is this moment, this dialogue can uh, make it uh, what's called emphasize our collaboration again that we can do together. Thank you, Kirana. Thank you, uh, Pasafri. So yeah, working together and stop the the marine pollution from the source, yeah, Pak. From yes. <laughs> uh, and any other speaker, maybe Dr. Lauren or Dr. Marian, in your uh, research in in Indonesia, what you see the challenge and the opportunity in 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 Indonesia in achieving this target. I can speak briefly. Yeah. Um, I, d I don't know the Indonesian situation quite as well as the Australian situation, but Australia has a very similar target at um, reducing plastic waste, entering the environment 80% um, by 2030. Mm -hmm. I d we don't have a similar target for plastic use though. Um, the approach that Australia is taking to reduce um, plastic entering the ocean, there's, there's multiple facets, but one of the major uh, one of the major things that we are doing is focusing on capturing plastic entering our stormwater systems um, so that it doesn't uh, transfer or is not transported from where it's dropped often in the urban areas into the stormwater systems, into the creeks and rivers and then entering the ocean. And this, this is the major area where we are focusing as a strong opportunity to reduce that plastic entering the environment. And there's a variety of methods uh, that we're sort of pro approaching, but the use of um, gross pollutant traps um, is a sort of big, big uh, avenue that we're chasing um, uh, for this. So that's one of the approaches that Australia is taking. Um, but I'm not sure whether it is um, the Indonesian situation is probably a little bit different. Um, what works in one country doesn't always work in others. But yeah, that's that's one of the approaches we're taking. I've just provided a link, um, yeah. sort of, to Australia's mission to do this and some of the things that um, we, uh, the country is going to try and do. Thank you so much, Dr. Lauren, um, for, for sharing your thoughts and inputs. Uh, so uh, all the yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, yes, Miss Ayako, May you I? want to? Yes, definitely. Yes, thank you. Over just, to you. Just, <laughs> just a brief uh, word. Um, I, I think in terms of coordination, uh, the fact that this uh, March, a uh, few months ago, uh, the UNEA 5.2 resolution was adopted and that we have an international consensus that the legally binding uh, solution to end plastic debris is necessary is a very positive trend uh, globally. And uh, we will see how this coordination will work. Uh, marine plastic debris issue is still quite new compared to climate change, for instance. Uh, so I, I hope to see a positive trend internationally and regionally as well. And maybe on that note, I'd like to promote the fact that uh, area will be organizing uh, in collaboration with the Republic of Korea's mission to ASEAN uh, um, uh, webinar this Thursday, uh, talking about this international coordination uh, and uh, consensus on how to end plastic debris um, in the region. So yes, please uh, watch our event. Uh, I will put the link in the chat box as well. So uh, if you're interested, anyone, uh, please uh, uh, register and, and watch our event. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ayako. And uh, maybe uh, lastly, before we close the Q&A session, I would like to invite uh, all the speakers maybe to share your closing statement in how we can ending this ocean plastic pollution uh, from commitment into action. So since Prof. Widi will uh, leave us uh, very soon, uh, so I'll give Pak Widi uh, first, Pak, over to you, Pak. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kiran, uh, as well as pa Dr. Arisman. So if we are serious, I think we have to engage, uh, part, make the participation of 34 provinces at least half, especially close by the ocean, you know, because some of province inside of the territory, but uh, might be half having coastline and marine related. So this is the, the important thing. The second one, uh, arranging the uh, marine debris separation that will be good, but the essential is participation first, because I think I think still in uh, household, household matters, 
uh, might be uh, public matters. Uh, they actually they are they are care whenever uh, Pak Safri putting announcement. But later on, I think life is just like usual. So this is the thing that NGO university have to be participate in engaging and supporting these activities. We know that capacity in the uh, government, uh, especially in the district and some other need support from uh, society, you know, from community. So the engagement of community should be also uh, being engineered or being supported. So don't even think like the matter of plastic debris is just like theoretical. This is the matter that implementation operational is very, very important. So the case of operationalize the way how to collect, to spread uh, will be important and mostly no responsibility through uh, profits. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Widi. Encouraging uh, local participation, province participation, ya, Pak, ya, especially coastal cities uh, in handling this issue. And so next, uh, Dr. Safri, would you like to take up next? Yes, thank you, Mbak Kirana, for you. If we're talking about the marine plastic, then we are talking about the solid waste management. So if we want to reduce marine plastic, I think we have to reduce the solid waste in, in the city, of course, and the others in the world. So I just to let you know what Pa Widi also mentioned is clear. We order now, we order to improve data quality management. We have to know, of course, this is important. So why? So the Minister of Environment order of, uh, to offer a platform for this one. And then among this one, I think local government also uh, now is uh, in racing uh, to, to do the, how to, to manage the, what's called a solid waste management in proper way. So I just, I just uh, advise for all the people, uh, participant here to, to make sure that we can do together. Let's support the local government because the, the center government just to give the, policy, a big policy, but the who main directly play a football is the local government. Let us support them. And I'm, I'm sure we support them based on the regulation, what we have, then I think we can, we can, we can properly take, uh, achieve our target at least 70% or, or uh, reduction of marine debris. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Safri. Empowering local government again uh, to tackling this issue, yeah, but uh, next, uh, maybe Miss Ayako, you want to take up next? Thank you. Just a, a, a last word. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, an expert in uh, waste management of plastic debris, so uh, just a few words. Just to say that um, plastic is a very useful uh, material, so we have to acknowledge that first. Uh, it's just the way we uh, produce and consume that has been just un unsustainable. So um, we have to rethink uh, how we, uh, um, you know, and, and the whole stakeholders, not just the government, not just the private sector or research institution, but also the citizens to rethink how we uh, consume plastics will be important and tackling it from upstream to downstream. So it's not really about the waste management issue, but also upstream consumption and production uh, side as well. So that would be my parting word. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Ayako and uh, Dr. Marian Olsen. Yes, thank you. I hope you can uh, hear me well. Very I have well. some issues with the connection, but uh, I hope it works now. I think a lot has been said already that points in the same uh, direction. We, we really need to pay attention to all steps in, uh, in the value chain and involve stakeholders at all levels from the local to national and regional level. We need to continue to collaborate and share, but also now to work uh, through the international processes following the ONEA 5.2 and continue to raise at the same time awareness locally. So both have this. It seems we lost the connection of Dr. Marian Olsen. Hello, Dr. Marian Olsen. If not, let's move to Dr. Lauren uh, for sharing uh, the closing remarks, uh, a statement for this dialogue. Over to you. 
Thank you very much. I agree with the points that all of the speakers have raised from the looking at different um, parts of the plastic value chain, evaluating our relationship with plastic uh, to balance its use as a material with also its persistence when it enters the environment. And especially um, the value of local government interventions um, and policies. Um, so our recent studies showed that the local government um, actions reduced uh, almost a third of plastic pollution uh, in the coastal area. So there's a big opportunity there for local governments um, to take actions. I also want to emphasise uh, plastic, as everybody here knows, it's a transboundary issue. And so it requires um, transboundary sort of friendships and participation. So I would like to thank you very much for inviting us here to represent CSIRO from uh, Australia. Um, to help um, in this uh, and to collaborate with this discussion also. So, yeah, I think working together both within our countries and also between countries is going to be very important to helping solve this solution, this problem. Thank you so much, Dr. Lauren. So from all these amazing uh, speakers we learned, we need to work together because this plastic issue is very complex issue. It's across multidisciplinary, across multi-stakeholders and across multi-level of uh, territory as well. So working together is needed in achieving uh, our common goal. So thank you again to all uh, distinguished speakers. Uh, uh, we learned so much from our dialogue and thank you so much to all participants for your engaging participation. Uh, we learned a lot, a lot of fantastic uh, sharing in the chat box. Uh, hopefully a new collaboration will be raised uh, in tackling this issue as well. And yeah, apologize. Belum ditutup, um, mohon ada foto Mbak Kirana. Oh gitu, oke okay, boleh Pak. Nanti kita serahkan ke Panitia ya Pak ya. So just to close uh, my uh, uh, dialogue, the, I apologize uh, to all the speakers and also participants for any mistake and I hope you all enjoy this webinar and learn a lot uh, of things as much as uh, I do from the speakers and the discussion as well. So we giving back to the committee and to the MC, maybe we can have a quick photo together as well, uh, MC, over to you. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, thank you so much uh, for Ms. Kirana for leading the discussion greatly and uh, effectively. And here we can uh, take a picture, uh, a quick take a picture uh, for all of us. Uh, and I hope um, the participants and speakers could open the camera. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, for next slide. One, two, three. The next slide. One, two, three. Okay, for the last slide, one, two, three. Okay, yeah, thank you for the all speakers and the participants. And for the next session, I would like to invite um, Mr. Arisman as an executive director of the Center for Southeast Asian Studies or CHISIS represented by Mrs. Ratnawati Kusumajaya as Deputy Director of the Center for Southeast Asian Studies or CHISIS to deliver a closing remarks for today's event. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I would like to start by thank you to Dr. Inyoman Radiarta, SPIMSC, the Chairman of Marine and Fisheries Research and Human Resources Agency, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries Republic of Indonesia, and all speakers for their excellent discussion. I would also like to thank you to all the participants. Without your input, ideas, and discussion, this event would not have been this successful. We have already heard the summarize from the moderator and I will not even try to repeat them. Uh, instead, I would like to share with you my personal view of this dialogue. 
Ocean plastic pollution is a growing problem in today's world, which come from land sources and is washed or blown into the ocean. This pollution results in damage to the environment, to the health of all organisms, and to economic structures worldwide. Solutions for marine pollution include prevention and cleanup. Disposable and single-use plastic is abundantly used in today's society, from shopping bags to shipping packaging to plastic bottles. Changing behavior approach to plastic use will be a long and economically challenging process. Many commitments, including in the ASEAN region, but we need more action to reduce plastic pollution from land-based going into the ocean. And ASEAN No project can be one of the example of action since we work with local government, local university, as well as the local NGO. The role of stakeholders is needed to end plastic pollution. I can summarize this by saying the collaboration is a key and we need to act now, not just talking. Happy World Ocean Day 2022, Arisman Executive Director, Center for Southeast Asian Studies, Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ratna, for the closing remarks. And distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, now we come to the end of the event of also officially the end of the event of Global Dialogue on Ocean Plastic Pollution, Ending Ocean Plastic Pollution from Commitment into Action. Thank you very much for your participation and attention. We hope we will see you in our near future event soon. Stay